Happily ever after. Redacted. Once upon a time, there lived a king and queen who ruled their kingdom as their forefathers had, but with even less wisdom. They hunted unicorns in the deep forests until there were none left. They banished all the wise old men and women, witches and hermits, priestesses and shamans, who advised them to follow a more prudent path. They threw parties for neighboring kings and queens that fairly bankrupted the castle, which led them to levy even higher taxes on the poor. Then they looked around at those neighbors' lands with covetous eyes, wishing they had more for themselves. But as it was mostly a peaceable country, they had no military recourse. After some years, the queen gave birth to a girl, which was something of a disappointment, since they wanted a prince who would inherit the kingdom and become king one day. At least she was beautiful and sweet-tempered, with a halo of golden hair that made her look like a cherub. Everyone who saw the baby princess fell in love with her. For the baby Aurora's naming ceremony, the king and queen invited everyone they knew, as well as three evil fairies who lived in the darker parts of the land. Every guest dined on rich delicacies that kept warm under golden domes, and they ate with golden forks and golden knives. Every banqueter was allowed to keep their golden dinnerware, as well as the jeweled goblets held ancient, priceless wine. And all the guests gave gifts to the beautiful little baby. Snow White ponies, pillows of velvet and silk, toys carved by the cleverest dwarves. And then it was the three evil fairies' turn. Here she is, as promised, said the king. Now it's time for your gifts, said the queen. The first fairy laughed wickedly. Hmm, how about beauty? She may as well be pleasant to be look upon while she slaves for us eternally. The second fairy said, I'll give her the gift of song and dance. Perhaps she can entertain us. The third fairy said, I give her parents the power they wish, and supernatural help they need to attain their heart's desire. And on her sixteenth birthday, we will claim the princess as ours. The three wicked fairies laughed and tittered in unsettling peals. No! Hidden among the guests was one of the last remaining good fairies in the kingdom, who had kept a low profile since the banishments began. My lord and lady, Maleficent said, coming forwards. She was an impressive figure, young and comely. You cannot do this. You cannot sell your child to the likes of these. I thought we'd done with the last of you, the king growled. Do not meddle in the affairs of kings, hag. It is not your place. Maleficent looked sadly down at the helpless little baby, who was still smiling despite what was going on around her. Poor child, she murmured. My powers are not strong enough to prevent this wicked transaction. Not the way matters stand now, but I swear on my own life I will be back and set everything to rights. On your sixteenth birthday, goodness and nobility will be restored to this wretched kingdom. And she vanished in a puff of green smoke. As the days wore on in the wretched kingdom, the little Princess Aurora grew in grace and beauty. She sang and danced to the lights of everyone around her. Her parents, meanwhile, made good use of the powerful demons and fearsome magics given to them by the fairies. They waged strange and terrible wars upon their neighbours that not only decimated their enemies, but punished the land itself, rendering it infertile and foul. Only horrible black and twisted things grew where the king and queen's army had passed. Soon, that was most of the known world. The peaceful valleys, lush orchards, sparkling rivers and snow-capped mountains that the queen and king had so envied and wanted for themselves were now nothing more then a blasted wasteland, blown through by hot and deadly winds, accompanied by only the most vile, unnatural creatures, born of darkness and magic. And the monsters, having consumed everything else, began turning their hideous eyes to their master's castle. Meanwhile, the good little princess was mostly neglected by her parents and often wore rags, except for the rare occasion when the king and queen noticed her and decided to dress her like a proper member of royalty, so all who remained could see and admire her. Aurora took her mistreatment surprisingly well, making friends with a dwindling number of cats, mice, dogs, birds, and squirrels who lived within the castle walls. All the people who still made the castle their home loved her utterly, but they were frightened of her parents more. At sixteen years of age, Aurora, now a beautiful young woman, knew full well that her birthday celebrations were less important than the apocalyptic events that were occurring in the world around her. She forgave her parents in advance for most likely forgetting that special day, as they had for the last fifteen. Still, she dressed in her finest gown and prepared to greet everyone with the grace and good humour for which she was known. Someone would remember and wish her congratulations, 
perhaps whispered so her parents wouldn't hear. As the clock struck noon in the middle of her birthday, the three evil fairies appeared. We have come for what we have been promised, the first one said. We can no longer control the magics who gave us, the king protested. Perhaps you shouldn't make deals with the devil, the second fairy said. You must save us, the queen cried. No, the third fairy said. Now hand her over. Confused, the woman looked from her parents to the fairies. What, what is meant by all of this? she asked, hoping against hope she didn't understand. You must go, the queen said warily, gesturing to the fairies. No! As had happened sixteen years previously, there was a puff of green smoke. Maleficent appeared. She did not look like she had before. Now she leaned hard on her staff, and her beautiful face was drawn and hollow. Black robes wrapped around her like she was an ancient pilgrim at the end of a very long journey. It has taken me the full sixteen years to prepare, but now I shall do my best to prevent further evil in this kingdom, she said, her voice so strong. She raised her staff, and green light glowed from the crystalline orb at its top. You have no power, the first fairy began. Be gone, Maleficent cried. She threw both of her hands in the air, and green fire shot from her body. The three fairies shrieked and dissolved backwards, the essence of their being returned to whatever evil place had spawned them. O oh, foolish king and queen, Maleficent said, what evil you have done cannot be entirely undone. The land will shriek forever from the pain you have caused it. Perhaps, however, I can save what little is left. She raised her arms again enchanted. Green fog flew, flowed out from her fingertips and through the delicately paned windows of the castle. It ebbed around the black and twisted trees that now grew in the dried up moat. Vines and thorns began to sprout from the ground. These grew rapidly and reached up over the castle walls, crisscrossing quickly like the warp and weft of a spinster's loom. Soon the whole castle was enveloped in a dark green shadow. Unholy sh cries of frustration rang out from the blasted land beyond. Spent, Maleficent fell back, her white face even paler than before. We are safe. The king, about to give her royal thanks or some such, was not allowed to speak. She held up her hand and he was silenced. You, however, will receive a punishment far kinder than you deserve, considering the things you have done, she said coldly. For selling your own daughter to the dark and destroying the world outside these castle walls, you should die. But as the new queen of this castle, I will show leniency and lock you in the dungeon forever, where you may think upon what you have done and repent. The guards of the castle and people within did nothing to stop this, and may in fact have helped push the old king and queen down the stairs. Sold me, Uwa muttered. I don't understand. Leveson put her hand on the poor girl's head. I'm so sorry, child, she said. This is a terrible thing to have happened to you and the world you knew. But at least now you and those still here may live, and we shall survive and prevail. And so Queen Maleficent, Aurora, and the survivors in the castle lived happily ever after, while the world lay dead and deadly around them.